Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul. Nice to see you here again. And if you're new, a very warm welcome. Now, today's recipe is for a soup. I like soups. Winter or summer, I like soups. They're very easy to make, but not always as tasty as I would like them. And this one is a very, very tasty soup, very rich and very, very intensive flavour. It's a mushroom soup, but using two different kinds of mushrooms. You can use whatever you want, but I'm using a white mushroom, a white cap, and a portobello, a brown cap mushroom. So, let's get on with it. So here we have the ingredients for my super mushroom soup. Uh, first of all, I've got 30 grams of unsalted butter. I've got two garlic cloves and I'm using two kinds of mushrooms here. Now you don't have to do that. I'm using white mushrooms, ordinary white cap mushrooms, and I'm using some portobello mushrooms. You can use brown caps or anything like that. The reason I'm using the brown cap mushrooms is because it gives a nicer colour, I think, a nicer depth of colour to the finished soup. And it also enhances the flavour. But if you're one of those people who like a nice pale white, sickly looking mushroom soup, use all white ones. <laughs> okay, so for the white ones, I've got 400 grams. For the portobello mushrooms, I've got about 200 grams, but you can mix and match that, it doesn't matter. I've got 800 mils or grams, because I've weighed it as well, of vegetable stock. Now you can use fresh vegetable stock, you can use a bought carton, or you can use a made up stock cube. You can use chicken stock if you don't mind adding some meat to the recipe, but this is totally vegetarian if you want to uh, just use the um, vegetable stock. I've got 800 grams of that. I'm only going to use a small amount of salt depending on what or how salty your stock is. If you've bought stock or made it yourself, um, you need to check and see how salty it is because some of the purchased ones, especially stock cubes, they can be quite salty. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm using a stock cube here today, which will be salty. So I'm only going to use a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Uh, and I've got one medium onion, and I'm also going to finish it off, with, you can finish it over with some creme fraiche, or ordinary cream, anything like that, just to give it a nice little bit of body. So there we are, those are the ingredients. We'll get the vegetables prepped, uh, the mushrooms prepped, and we'll put it all together, okay? Now, I've prepped the onion, chopped it small. It doesn't matter how you chop this up because it's all going to be blended in the food process, in the uh, uh, blender afterwards. So it doesn't matter. It just needs cutting small like that. I've pushed the garlic through a garlic press. You can chop that if you want with a knife. It doesn't make a lot of difference. And when they come to the um, mushrooms, the best way to do this is cut them into slices first, like this. And then take the slices and cut them into like that. So what I've done is I've cut them into one, two, three that way. That's making four portions and one, two that way. Okay. So you can see just nice cubes. That's all we need. lap now. Just one more to do. That's it. For the white ones. I'll do the brown caps and then we'll carry on with putting it together. So we've got everything prepared, ready to start and cook it off. Now, first of all, you need a nice heavy bottomed pan. 
this has got a nice heavy base and we don't want a flimsy pan because it'll burn very quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to fry off in this butter, first of all, we need to melt the butter, and we're going to fry off the onion and the garlic together. Now we're not looking to brown anything here, remember, we're only looking to soften it because we don't want little brown black bits of onion and garlic floating about in the in the soup. So I'll just melt that. And then we're going to pop in the onion first. And the garlic. Give it a good stir in the butter. Remember, we're not looking to brown any of this. That's important. Now we need to just gently fry that in this butter, and I mean gently, not very fierce heat, for three minutes. Okay? And to that end, I'm just going to put the timer on so that we do know it's three minutes. Okay? Just keeping it turned around so it's all softening evenly in the bottom. And there we are, the time is up, three minutes. And now we're going to add in the mushrooms. Now I do, I do realise this looks like a hell of a lot of mushrooms. But, first of all, anyone who's fried mushrooms or cooked mushrooms before knows that there's a lot of water in here and they go down to virtually nothing. So don't worry about it. So they're all going to go in next. All of them. I'm going to give them a little stir just to make sure to mix them up with the onion and the garlic and they start to absorb some of the butter. Now we're not looking to brown any of this, of course we couldn't possibly because the pan is too full. You can only brown things when you've got small amounts in. As the water starts to come out of here, it will stop anything browning anyway. So this will happen and we're going to now leave this to cook for a further 10 minutes. Just keep occasionally giving it a turn to make sure nothing's sticking on the bottom. I'm just going to pop a, a lid on there, it's on a low heat, and I'm going to leave that now for the rest of the 10 minutes. Right, the 10 minutes is up now, and the reason I left the lid on for that 10 minutes, I have given it an occasional stir, but You'll see how much the mushrooms have gone down, and if I just get the ladle, I show you how much water has actually come out of the actually come out of the mushrooms. And I didn't want all that to evaporate whilst it was cooking because that's all the flavour that's coming out of the mushrooms, the garlic, and the ginger. So you can see the consistency of them now. What we're going to add now is the stock, 800 millilitres or grams, I weighed mine, and the salt and the pepper. Now because my stock was a bought stock cube, it was a little bit salty than I normally like it, so I've only used a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in this. If it needs any more afterwards, I can adjust it, but I can't take it out. So that's the important thing. So we're going to leave that now. We're going to bring it to the boil, then turn it down to a simmer and leave that for a further 15 minutes. The pepper, I used about an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, I like black pepper. I, I like things a bit peppery. 
I didn't use a lot purposely because a lot of people don't like it. If again, it's not to your taste, you can always add salt and pepper afterwards. Don't worry about that. So I'm going to bring that to the boil and then we're going to turn it down to a simmer and leave the lid off this time. Leave the lid off and we're going to leave it for 15 minutes. There we are, you can see now it's coming up to the boil around the edges. I'm going to turn that down to a simmer and I'm going to put the, uh, leave the lid off this time, I'm not putting the lid on. Turn it down to a simmer and leave it for 15 minutes. So we'll set the timer for 15 minutes and I'll see you when it's ready. Right, here we are. It's been cooking another 15 minutes now with the lid off and I'm going to add the creme fraiche now. You can add creme fraiche or you can add cream. It doesn't make any difference. I like to add creme fraiche because I think with any kind of a savoury dish, if you add a little something acidic at the end of it, I think it gives you a very good extra kick with it. So you see people that squeeze lemon juice or lime juice into something and this creme fraiche has got a little acidic kick with it, a little tartness, so I like to use that instead of cream. Now I've put that in there and I'm going to let that simmer now for another five minutes. So I'll just set the timer for five minutes and away we go. Now once this has simmered for five minutes we're going to allow it to cool a little and then we're going to put it in the blender. I'm going to blitz it till it's very very smooth. Um, I have tried doing this with a wand blender. It doesn't do it fine enough I'm afraid. So I, I use my food, um, this one, my, my blender. I use this. I think this is a lot better for, um, for doing it than the stick blender. The stick blender is good for some things but it doesn't go fine enough. Now it's just coming to the simmer again now and we'll leave it for the rest of the five minutes. Right, we're going to blitz the soup and I'm going to use my goblet blender here because I've tried the stick blenders and it doesn't, for me, uh, blitz it fine enough. I like it nice and smooth. So I'm going to use this. But a little tip using these, I think I should point out to you. Here, let me just move that. When you're doing hot things like this, it's always best to remove this part here at the top, if you can. Let's just turn it there. Because when you put hot liquids into a blender, it can explode and push the lid off. What I do is I take the top off like that and then I fold a clean tea towel and put it over there and then it doesn't uh, cause any pressure inside, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. So we'll fill this up next and let's get blending. I'm going to do it in a couple of turns. Slowly first of all. And then turn the speed up. So here we are. Now remember I've added no thickener to this at all and it's made a lovely creamy mushroom soup. Now all I need to do now is when I need to, want to use it I put that in a saucepan and warm it and serve it with croutons or something similar. Garnish it with a little um, chopped parsley or chives or something like that on top um, and it really is a delicious rich mushroom tasting soup 
Well that's about it for this week now. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, go down below underneath, give it a thumbs up, a like, and I know you've liked it. If you have any comments, suggestions or requests, leave them underneath also. I do read them all, I try to answer as many as I possibly can. So, this is Mr Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye!